good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our online swap shop. We are very happy to be here this afternoon and uh, very happy with um, the positive response to our different events that uh, we uh, announced. Uh, so we had already, uh, we did the Twitter chat, we did the Facebook chat, now it's the online swap shop, and we have another one uh, next week. So, I am Sandra Lane and I work for the Service National du Récit Domaine des Langues and I'm with my colleague, Alexandra. <laughs> the camera is coming on. Hi everybody, my name is Alexandra Coutley and I also collaborate with the Service National du Récit Domaine des Langues and I've been working with Sandra since last year. So we're going to start uh, our presentation. So. Uh, I we decided with this event to ask uh, the members of uh, Speak It uh, if they want to wanted to present uh, uh, an idea to integrate ICTs in your class and their in, in the ESL classroom. And since it's our mandate as a, a new special interest group at Speak, uh, so that's the reason why we asked them to present today. So I would like to thank them for accepting. Uh, in such short notice to present with us uh, this afternoon. So thank you. Uh, we really appreciate taking that time since it's the end of the year. And I know that uh, for everyone, it's, uh, it's a crazy end of the year. <laughs> so a lot of topics uh, that you're going to see in today's session. So uh, using digital portfolios, uh, writing collaboratively, uh, developing our own interaction skills, uh, give video feedback, build vocabulary, keep track of students' progress, and I will come back at the end to present what is the Service National du Récit Domaine des Langues and all the resources that are available on our website. So how it will work, we're going to do a five-minute presentation. It will be followed by a three-minute question session. So if you have a question, you use the chat box uh, below your names. And you type your question, and the presenter will uh, answer, uh, will try to answer uh, uh, your question. And if you have a question remaining, we will share a collaborative document at the end of the session, and you will be able to uh, ask your question to the presenter. Uh, to, to the presenter, and everything will be. Uh, shared by email. So all the links to the presentation will be shared this week uh, by email. And this session is also recorded, so you will be able to go back and watch the, uh, the different uh, five-minute presentation. So we're going to start with uh, Manon Amel, who will be presenting, uh, where she will be talking about digital portfolios. So have fun. All right. So, uh, hello everyone. My name is uh, Manon Amel. I'm from uh, Commission Scolaire de la Capitale. I'm uh, honored to start uh, this uh, first event of uh, Swap Shops uh, being given. Five minutes is pretty uh, short, so I'm going to start right ahead. So, today I'm going to talk about Seesaw as the learning journal. So, basically, what is Seesaw? Seesaw is a student driven digital portfolio um, that empowers students to create, comment, and share their learning with an authentic audience. Uh, for me, uh, it simplified uh, the use of a portfolio in class because I was able to, to do it online and I was able to keep it organized and also to track students' uh, progress uh, more efficiently. If you decide to do it in your settings, you can also decide to engage parents uh, in, the, uh, in the portfolio and even uh, have it uh, shared with a blog that is available worldwide. Different tools are accessible uh, in the Seesaw. So you have the photo, video, drawing, camera roll, the note. You can also include a link. And more recently, uh, we were able to share uh, files, download files that would uh, be integrated in the student's portfolio. Um, it's available on all device, so it's, I think it's quite important for you to understand that when I first started using CISA four years ago, I only had one iPad in my classroom, and I was able to uh, really have my students uh, benefit from the use of this tool. Um, 
you can have your students log in through uh, using a, a QR code if you have only one device. But if you have multiple devices, you can have your uh, students join in with the code, and uh, they would be using their uh, email address. It's always under teacher supervision, so all the documents and comments that you would uh, have your students put in their portfolio would have to go through your teacher's uh, your your approval before putting it uh, in there. And uh, it is your role to customize the settings. So that is that you can allow your students to like, edit, or even comment uh, peer, uh, peer documents. The journals are organized and sortable in a way that you can browse your students' work uh, in groups as a group, or even browse it as individual students. It's really reliable when you have um, parents meeting because you can flag uh, important documents in the student's portfolio so you can have feedback with the parents. And you can also create folders for your students to be able to uh, organize uh, their projects and all their uh, artifacts. Oops. Why it is so powerful for me, it's because it's, uh, it captures evidence of learning. So this is how it transport my classroom. What I thought was that it was really interesting uh, to, oh, wait a minute. There you go. There's something wrong, Sandra. Oh, there you go. So you, you can use uh, Seesaw to empower students to think and reflect, uh, but it also provides meaningful feedback. So you can use it to evaluate your students as well. You can uh, use it to teach digital uh, citizenship and basically to uh, track uh, students' progress. But what it is basically is that it, it creates a community around learning. So this is uh, how powerful it was. On the next slide, what I did is I provided you with uh, many ideas uh, for you to use in your classroom. I don't know what is happening with the slide right now, but it will come up. Uh, I listed it under different tools that are available uh, in CISA. But today I'm going to focus on uh, one project that I had. So here you have like different things that you can do with the drawing tool. So you can annotate uh, your students' work. You can have your students do peer editing. You can assess their learning. Uh, you can, uh, with the camera roll, you can app smash with different uh, applications that are available. You can add files from different uh, media to have your students do an entry or an exit ticket, for example, uh, doing a web, web organizer as an entry ticket, for example, and you can post it in CISA so they can use it as a resource after. But today I'm going to focus on one project I had, which was um, creating an appreci appreciation of an art project we did in class. So what is cool also in uh, CISA is that you can create your own activities uh, there is a library that is accessible and you can customize it. What I added here is uh, the short cut for icons that you can use to create your own uh, presentation. So basically there is a lot of support that is available, wide range of tutorials to use uh, if you are new uh, users uh, in CISA and uh, I, I, I uh, remind you that you can uh, get in contact with me, get in touch with me, and I will be uh, more than happy to give you feedback and to help you in your experiment of this powerful tool that is Seesaw. Thank you. Thanks, Manon. I don't know if there's any question for Manon. There's a question from Debra who's asking, what level do you use CISA? I am teaching intensive ESL, so I am a grade six teacher. And I use it with all my groups. I see three groups sometimes, depending on the, the organization scolaire in my school board. But I use it with uh, approximately 100 students grade six level. Great. I, can I add something yes. very shortly? Uh, because she um, CISA, what is great if you have uh, um, a 
access to uh, different tablets like iPads, it's easy uh, to um, upload all the projects that students created with your iPads in Seesaw. So it's one easy way. Uh, if you had to use it only uh, for that, it's, uh, it's something that is really easy to implement into your classroom. I agree. Good. Well, is there any uh, other question? Good. Perfect. Well, thank you, Manon, for accepting and uh, have a, a great uh, session with us. Now, Randy, your turn. Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> because of technical problems, I'm going to be giving a little wink at Sandra every now and then to tell her to uh, change slides, okay? So today I'm going to be talking to you about a mandate that I created many years ago uh, in its original version back on my little Apple uh, SC. So this mandate is called Creating an ESL Magazine or Other Written Medium Collaborati Collaboratively Using ICT. Sandra. So <laughs> where were you in 1995? Well, anybody sees that can see that little computer, sees uh, and any of us Apple people knows that that's a little Mac SE. So way back in 1993, I got my first Mac SE, and then I had some workshops from this guy named Jim Howden, who all of you know probably, and it was all about uh, cooperative learning. So I was kind of good in computers and as well with, uh, with the cooperative learning. And my CP at the time came to see me. She said, can you combine the two? And that's what I did. So <laughs> you can just see simply from the page layout that it looks like something from that era with the uh, Apple, uh, I can't even remember what I used to create that, but you can see the little things all around it and all that. And then I created this one. That's a thumbs up sent. <laughs> so the 2018 version is a revamp of the original document. Uh, what I was going to do at the time was rewrite it. And I just got such a chuckle out of the simple fact that I was talking about putting in floppy disks and I was even explaining how to save and all of that. So I just thought it would be make it more amusing for people to see the original version as well. And on the bottom of each one, then, I added a section talking about today's technology. So in the former version, what you will see in the actual document itself, it's a problem secretary font. I wanted something that looked like something from that time. It's purely entertainment value. Don't get lost if you don't know what a floppy disk or whatever is. Uh, and it's also based on the objective-based programs that existed at that time. For the new version, below each section where I explain it, there's a Calibri a light font box. I talk quite often about how to use the collaborative writing tools like Google Docs, and I emphasize the three competencies, competency, sorry, developing in synergy. So you can see that there's going to be a mixture of the two, but just look for the little boxes down below to look at the uh, 2018 version. So there's a little introduction telling you where this came from. Uh, I talk about the different cooperative structures, the writing process from way back then and adapted, how to get started, the different activities in a lot of detail, and the criteria for evaluation. So for each of the cooperative structures, what I did at the very beginning of the document is I uh, explained them all. So this would be an example of one. You have a numbers head together explained. In groups of four, each student is assigned a number from one to four. The teacher gives the students a task to perform. The students consult each other, making sure that everyone knows the answer. The teacher then chooses a number between one and four, and the student who were assigned that number for that group answers. So in the different activities, the way they're set up 
is you're given an overview. So this is one of them. I, what I did is at the time I looked through a number of different magazines and just saw what was in the magazines at the time. So we're talking about the team beat and all that stuff, uh, celebrity interviews and all that. So you have an overview, the objective, the cooperative structures being used, the material, the grouping. So if you see three types of grouping mentioned, it means they're being used and an advanced preparation thing for if, if students need to have pictures or whatever, what can be done ahead of time, and then a procedure for each one really in a lot of detail. Should be able to just read it and go with it. And at the very bottom, computer notes. So the computer notes are made to go with that version way back when. So as you can see here in the computer notes, in the base groups, Students type up their celebrity's name at the top of their individual computer screens. During the simultaneous round table, oh, that's the time, okay. The other members of the group type their questions, da da da, da. And then you have the uh, new version, the suggestions with the ver new version, where I say here, like, this would be a great time to talk about image copyright, copyright students should be encouraged to use Creative Commons, et cetera. In other ICT suggestions, I talk a lot about using either Google Drawings, uh, Google Docs, and all of that as well. Also at the end, what I did is I added the rubrics. We have the writing process. I have an all evaluation ones uh, as well. And here are the rubrics that I created it about uh, 10 years ago and they can be used. I have all three competencies there because this is not just a written production. There's also because of the cooperation, of course, lots of interaction. Okay, this happens. <laughs> I think we lost uh, Randy. Uh, he's going to come back soon. Randy, you're missing a slide. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, it's a famous school board session where it logs you out automatically. Well, guess what? <laughs> so I think that's the last slide, Sandra. Just give it a try. So now available. So Sandra will be telling you where to go on the Speak, uh, speak It site Sorry to get it. So uh, any questions, folks? By the way, it probably was Apple Works, Sandra. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I forgot all about that. Okay, so uh, uh, the, 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 the different uh, activities will be uh, sent to you by email. So, uh, and afterwards will be, uh, I think, uploaded on um, a section of the Speak website. So it needs to be uh, organized that way, but uh, no worries. Yes, thank you, Nadia. <laughs> no worries. Uh, you're going to get uh, everything that we're presenting today. So you and have it's, the activity. Yes. Oh. Sorry. And it's created as a big uh, as a PDF file, so uh, you can just follow along in that. Perfect. Thank you, Randy. <laughs> thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> so uh, thanks. I think it's uh, Gabriel's turn. So Gabriel, if you're ready, good, thanks. I'm going to let you access your presentation. There you go. Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Gabriel Spurniak. I am an intensive English teacher for the yes. Sciences Po de Laval. Um, I worked with a grade six uh, intensive class in the five-month five -month program, and today I'm going to present you clickers and an activity um, that uh, Sandra helped develop. To, uh, develop uh, to can you just uh, nice uh, put your sound up? I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt you. We cannot hear you well. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, let me let me see what I can do here. Can you hear me better now? Yes, it's better. Thank you. Okay, 
So as I mentioned, together with uh, Sandra, we produced a video that's going to be uh, accessible at the end of the presentation, um, which will probably answer more questions about using Flickrs into your classroom. So, what is Flickrs? And why did we use Flickrs? Um, the mandate of the intensive uh, English uh, classroom is uh, basically creating oral interaction. Um, so, in, with, with, the, with the help of Flickrs, we create a discussion group and we have students exchange ideas on different issues. Uh, my example will be, uh, would you rather exercise where the students uh, discuss between themselves and uh, came to a consensus about uh, who would they rather be. After discussion, uh, students come and they choose their answer using a Flickr's card. And I'm going to show you right now a Flickr's card. So the Flickr's card has four different sides. And they choose the answer that uh, you deem on the board, the, the answer that they uh, basically decided on, giving, uh, giving you quick access to their point of view. I set up the class into groups of four for this activity. Uh, I asked one of the students to help me um, give the cards to the students. Uh, you set up the set of uh, questions um, and discuss them using Flickr's Live. Flickr's Live is available on your program. And you're giving students enough time to discuss and come up with the answer. When you decide that the time is up, you ask them to put their clickers cards up, just like I did the first time. And using your smartphone uh, like this, you will start basically reading their codes and getting the answers. The introductory class should take around 30 or 40 minutes, and I advise you to basically uh, do it for two reasons. Once the students will get accustomed to how to use uh, Flickrs and the Flickrs card, and also you as a teacher, you will see uh, where you need to do some changes, where you need to improve, or uh, what questions were and what questions didn't. After that, uh, when the students become more knowledgeable in using Flickrs, all future activities will take less time. You can use Flickrs uh, both as a regular ESL teacher or an intensive English teacher. Um, I worked as both, and my personal experience, I used Flickrs with grade four, five, and six. It is easy and fun to teach and experience. Flickers is a free program to find at www.flickers.com. Uh, you can use it from a PC or a Mac. You also need a smartphone uh, with the Flickers app installed on it. You can find it in your Google Play or in your Apple Store. In, in your Flickers account on your computer, you will print your cards and you will create your own questions in different forms. Then you will use the live mode on the computer get onto the phone, and you will queue the questions uh, basically on your phone. Uh, I wanted to basically find clickers and show you how you queue. So your queue at this moment, it will look like this on your phone. So you will add the questions from your library. As you can see, there you can create as many questions as you want, and you will beam them up on your interactive whiteboard. Uh, when you're ready, you use the uh, you will use your phone to scan absolutely everybody in the classroom, and after that, you will check the answers uh, when you're ready. You need uh, an interactive whiteboard, a good computer, and flawless internet access. If you do not have internet access, your Flickr's activity will not work correctly. Also, you need to print your cards beforehand and identify them correctly with the name. If you're a regular English teacher, what I did is basically I wrote on the back of the cards uh, the groups I had and uh, using uh, maybe um, 
a, a pencil, I would write really lightly on the back of the card uh, the group uh, components, like every three or four students. Things I would watch out for, make sure your cards are printed on thicker paper. So as you can see, uh, my card is on a thicker paper that doesn't bend very easily. And it states right because when you scan your activity, you have to keep the card up. Also, your fingers should not touch the black part. So make sure you ask your students to put their fingers in the white part of the clicker's card. Interest, internet access is a must. Check it before you start your activity. Uh, make sure you have a helper in every class you want to use Flickr and it really cuts down on preparation time and on the downtime so you will have less management problems when you pass the exam. And always make sure that you come up with different questions. You ask your students, what would you like to check comprehensively or what would you like to discuss about? They will give you ideas. Use those ideas to implement them in the Flickr's questions. Um, whether they're fun, whether you're, they're serving your specific teaching purpose. So resources available, www.plickers.com, the app on Google Play and uh, on Apple Store. And a couple of would you rather questions if you want to implement them really quickly, you have the sites there. And um, uh, I would really, really, really like to suggest if you would like to uh, look and take a look and watch the video that uh, Sandra was very kind to produce uh, uh, while she overviewed the activity in the classroom. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask them. My name is Gabriel Spernak. Uh, my email is gspernak at cslaval.qc.ca. It's been an honor to be today with you and excited to see Thanks, Gabriel. I don't know if there's any questions for Gabriel. Uh, he talked about a video, so I went into his classroom to film uh, the experience, so you will have a better idea of what what is uh, he just explained, and uh, and it's really to integrate into your class. And it's a low tech uh, type of activity, so if you don't have access to a lot of technologies, this is one way uh, to start with. Uh, Miss Nadia is right. Do not plastify your cards because after that you will not be able to scan them correctly uh, with your phone. Just make sure that you print them uh, on thicker paper, uh, whether it's white uh, uh, carton or maybe mine is gray because that's what I found that the day I went to the printer. Uh, it works really, really well. Oh, you lost another one. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm sorry, Gabriel. Um, I will jump to the other presentation. I see time uh, uh, that flies by. So um, next presenter is Alexandra. Super. All right. All let right. me make sure we can hear you. Back on. Let's yes. check. All right. And now it's working. All right. Just to see if you guys were awake or anything. So let me move on to my presentation. My name is Alexandra Kutley. I work for La Commission Scolaire Rivière du Nord. I'm a high school teacher. I've been teaching for uh, 15 years now and have taught basically secondary one to secondary five, core and easel. Right now I'm working with at Sandra Lane um, for the Service National du Récit and having so much fun. So, just like you in the past, and I'm assuming you guys can relate to, to those images, I spent hours and hours correcting writing productions for my students. I would spend lots of time circling things, highlighting, putting notes in uh, the margin for students to read, and then what would happen? Frustration. Students would look at their grades, 
and then throw their papers in the bin. After spending all that time basically giving them feedback, they would just throw it in the garbage. So I decided to change things up a little bit and decided to rethink the way I planned my writing activities. So here is how I structured a writing task. So first I would assign a writing task. Uh, sometimes it was an in-class writing task or at home. In both cases it was done uh, on a computer so that I could have it as um, a computer format basically. I would give students a due date for their first draft. If it was at home, if it was in class, it would be at the end of that class, for example. And then I would give feedback on the first draft through video. So I would project on my screen their writing and using uh, a device to record my screen, I would give them the feedback. Once the feedback was given back to them, I give them one week to adjust their text and then hand in their final version, and then I go back to using the rubric. So the feedback was actually given before. Now the tech tools I used, and I've used it different ways. So I've used it as homework because I didn't have access to any computers. I've used it at the computer lab if I could reserve it. Uh, this year I was very, very lucky and got uh, Chromebooks for all the students. So I know, very, very lucky. Um, I've also used it would bring their own devices if they could, if it was a short writing. So basically anything that they could type and then send to me works. I've used uh, Google Docs, but you can also use any type of writing tools like Microsoft Word or PowerPoint or even Google Slides or a blog or any website. As long as you can project their production on your screen and you can record it, it works. Um, I've used Screencastify in the past. I, I liked it because it saved on uh, Drive and it was easy to access. But I've recently uh, discovered Loom, which is the one right here, uh, that looks very interesting. And you could also use something like QuickTime or basically anything that comes with your computer to film your screen. The actual feedback was very, tar very targeted. I like to call it challenges to the students and not um, actually mistakes. So I would target one or two elements for each category. So one or two for the content and one or two for formulation of the message. What this means is that for a student who is performing, I could push them and challenge them to, for example, use synonyms. For a weaker student, I could challenge them to try to avoid translation in their text. I can also link to outside resources. If you see, this is an example of a writing production. And on the side, I can actually comment and add resources. For example, link to a website explaining capitalization, for example. The advantages, well, my remedial actually became effective. Students would show up and say, all right, I changed all of this, but I have one more question. This one, I wasn't sure what to do. They would actually show up and not just say, my mother said I had to come and see you. Um, it also allowed me to differentiate instruction because I could do individual challenges for every student. Communication with parents was also uh, improved because I could warn parents if I saw a problem with the first draft and not wait until the actual correction. Uh, if needed, I could share the feedback with the parent to, uh, to let them know what was going on and it helped me to keep track of student progress and I could go back to the writing productions if I met with a parent. Because it's online, it's saved in the cloud, it's accessible anywhere, I can correct at the library, at home, anywhere, all my copies are directly online. Things to watch out for. Well, I'm not going to say it takes less time. It takes just as much time as correcting on paper and circling and highlighting, but it is so much more efficient. You need to have a good internet connection because as you're giving the feedback, you need to make sure it won't cut you. And you need to be ready that not everybody will watch the videos that you made for them, just like not everybody was reading the comments. But a lot more students watched the video than read the comments <laughs> from my paper copies. And you have to be okay with that. Uh, here I will send the presentations. Well, all of the presentations will actually be sent to you. So I've given you three links to interesting articles to read about feedback and how to provide effective feedback that actually help me uh, when giving feedback to students.
And I'm leaving you with my email and how to reach me if you want to try it out this year or next year and you have questions, you're wondering about anything, please don't hesitate to contact me. I'll be happy to help. And that's it. Any questions? Yeah, I guess they're very shy. <laughs> no question, I was that clear. All right then. <clears throat> okay, so thanks uh, Alexandra, Emily, it's your turn. Hi, can you hear me? So um, I'm, I'm quite happy I'm going right after Alexandra because I think uh, both our presentation, they go together a little. So, um, so my name is Emily Racine and today I will be discussing how to keep track of students' progress using Google Forms. Um, first of all, a little background info about myself. I work at the Scum Scolaire de Portneuf as an ESL Spanish and RICI CP. Um, because I work in both ESL and RICI, I can, I can definitely see all the advantages of the integration of technologies in, my, in English, actually. Um, and for the longest time as a teacher, I had an issue with evaluation. And the issue is that I, I felt like evaluation was fixed in time. I could tell you that my student was really good in November, on November the 2nd, for example. And then I could tell you that he did not do great in December, but everything in between was kind of a blur. Um, some teachers, they do keep like for the writing part, for example, for writing competency, some teachers will, will keep a portfolio of the written text um, but let's be honest if you have 300 students even if you have 300 portfolios at the end of the year it's really difficult to take all the text out and compare them in terms of grammar or uh, topic uh, requirements uh, so we barely do that uh, we have too many copies and compa we compare marks when, when we do. So we, the last week he had like 50 something and now 70 something, but the mark doesn't really say what the challenges of the student, uh, the student are. Um, so what we decided to do, this was um, a project that I've worked with all year long with uh, Marie-Jacques Bilodeau in a C CP in Labos and some teachers of our board. We really wanted to evaluate the students' progress and we wanted to build a tool that would allow us to evaluate the progress instead of fixed uh, exams during the school year. Luckily, Google Forms came to our rescue, so we decided to use Google Form. Uh, for those who, uh, of you who don't know what Google Form is, uh, it's a survey tool. It can create quizzes. Uh, you can use it as a registration form, flip classroom assignments, a lot of stuff you can do with the uh, Google Forms. But today we're going to focus on the uh, gathering of data and analysis of data. That's what we want to do with our Google Form. What we did, basically, uh, I'll explain a little how we created our form, but you don't have to, to, um, to recreate one because I'm going to give you the, at the end of my presentation, I'm going to give you the link to our model so you could just copy the model. Uh, what we decided was to create a form that you could fill in every time you're actually grading uh, text. It could be long or shorter text, but each time you're grading, you're going to go there and just um, check the checklist. We did it as a checklist because we thought it wa we wanted it to be time um, effective. We didn't want teachers to be spending a lot more time grading because they had to fill in that form. So we have the characteristics of the written text. You have to fill in the student name. Is the text on the text on topic? So we have little questions like this: punctuation, words provided from the resource correct. correct correctly spelled so you can recognize all these criteria from the um, usual grids that you have the mark for marking. 
when you're filling it out, you're going to keep the same form all year long, always writing it, filling it out. Uh, it's really important that you keep the same form because uh, at the end you'll see all your data will be gathered in one simple document. We also decided to um, to create a scrollable list for the uh, grammar elements because we felt that sometimes we're trying to to correct everything because we don't want to leave any mistakes on the sheet when we give it back to kids. But we we really wanted us to be focused on one or more elements, so it would be more it would be easier for kids to um, to see what their challenges were. So once you've completed that, you can go and see all and analyze all the data that you have in your Google form. Uh, for example, you could see here that your classroom is mostly on topic most of the time, so it would help you as well to um, know what you have to improve with all your students. But then, if you click on the little icon here, it will create a spreadsheet for you. And a spreadsheet is basically an Excel document kind of, for, for Google, uh, where all your data is collected and organized. And what I really like about that is that you can change, if you know how an Excel or spreadsheet works, you can change the order of the information just by clicking on each cell. So, for example, thank you girls, because uh, you um, I took some of your names to fill in my uh, fake uh, document. Uh, but you could see now Alexandra has two written production, so I can organize them, them in time by name by group if I had added the um, the option. So I can see that she was on topic, uh, she respected the requirements most of the time, um, all the time, so I can really look and I have a, a place for comments when I fill in the the, uh, the Google form. And it's, it's really easier to meet with the parents then and to, when parents come to you at the parents meeting and they tell you what could my kid improve, well, uh, uh, based on results, it's really difficult to say, but then if you have all this data, you can tell them, well, a simple pass was a little uh, difficult and then yes, uh, the, the respecting the requirements uh, needs to be worked on. So. Um, so it's really, um, I felt that data was really, really important for the teacher to, to keep. Um, and then, um, all this we built, Marie and I, during our um, Fonds Cooperatif. Our, our, we worked on this all year long. And we're going to give five different webinars in September about boosting writing in the ESL classroom. Um, we're going to talk about efficient writing routines, skillful peer feedback, creating specific rubrics, assessing students' progress, a little what we talked about today, and publishing and celebrating writing. writing. So if you don't want to miss it, you can access my website site as, as, uh, at eseducation.wixsite.com um, slash playground. I'm going to give that the, this uh, presentation to Sandra and Alexandra so they'll be able to share it with you. You can also su subscribe to the mailing list so you'll get all the uh, newest activities every time I, I upload one on the website. Any questions? We're very clear. <laughs> I'm happy it was. Happy it was. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Emily. Goodbye really then. Interesting. Yeah. Thanks. Bye bye. So uh, Nadia will be uh, doing the next presentation, and I will finish with uh, the Rissi presentation. Your sound, uh, Nadia. Just click on your microphone. <laughs> this is here now. So uh, thanks for all this uh, great information, everybody. Um, I am going to talk about Mentimeter, which is a tool that I have used with my students starting grade three, uh, at, because I uh, teach at the elementary level at uh, Samuel de Champlain Brassard. Uh, I am also a uh, in the speak board, and I've been uh, helping with the the website, and um, I am also a part time consultant at the Commission Scolaire Marie Victorin, and uh, that's it. So let's start with the presentation. 
I, uh, the, the, my goal when I use Mentimeter is uh, often as a hook, uh, often uh, to activate prior knowledge because uh, students have vocabulary and they never, they always think they don't know anything, they forget things, so uh, using that gets the, the vocabulary back in their heads before they start doing a project. Uh, also, I use it as a review of vocabularies when when we've started the unit and there's a few uh, there were there were a few activities and then we start the next class and then just to get the vocabulary back in their heads um, we uh, we we uh, I play the activity I do Mentimeter so Mentimeter is a um, tool that we use that is, uh, which is an uh, easy to use, very, very easy to pre prepare. And it's a, it's a real-time voting tool uh, to engage your audience. So whatever people who uh, participate uh, write, it, uh, it appears right away, if you let it appear, of course. Um, so basically, it's um, online. Uh, and what the activity I do is usually the word cloud, which is uh, the activity that I like the most. There's other activities that I'll show you later, but uh, word, cloud is, word cloud is my favorite because it's so easy to use. Uh, basically, I have them, uh, I separate them into teams depending on the technology available. I have eight iPads and four computers. Um, students go to menti.com and enter the code uh, that you give them that's on the board. With their teams, they discuss words they've learned in the previous lessons or depending on the activity I choose to do. Uh, you, can, you can have them write uh, the number of words you want, but I usually ask for three to five words. And then um, what they have to do is they have to make sure that they write the words uh, correctly because uh, I'll show you a little image later. When they are written incorrectly, it, they are uh, put into two different words. So uh, it doesn't work. So, uh, and then um, often what I do is because I don't want them to see the answers on the board right away, I had, hide them. And then when everybody's done, then I show all the, uh, the, poss the answers that were posted. One thing that I really, really enjoy in, Men in uh, Mentimeter is that the, in the word cloud, let's say there's uh, two teams that use the same word. Well, uh, the word will get will be bigger on the screen. It won't just be words everywhere the same size. Uh, the more you use the word, the bigger it becomes. So if a word is very popular, it'll be bigger. But also, you can also ask them to use different words that you think they won't that they won't it won't be posted there. So that way, you have more options, more words in the cloud. In the cloud. So. Um, and then when the, uh, you, they start seeing the words on the board, then you can analyze the answers, you check the spelling, you check, oh, is this really uh, a word that was in the unit? Was it on your head? Where did you find this word? So it's, uh, it's really um, a great to practice vocabulary and get words in their head. Um, the, now, remember, they will forget them all during the summer, just by the way. Um, so. It usually depending uh, on the uh, time, if you if it's the first time you use a Mentimeter, it might take a little longer to get them organized. But uh, if it's something you use often and that you have the iPads available already, uh, then it, it can be really quick, three minutes and it's done. So uh, it's, it can be, uh, yeah, very quick. Um, so it's, uh, it's, Mentimeter is free with limited content. So it means that uh, you, well, you can use these activities. The one that I like the most is the one that's highlighted is the word cloud. Um, but there's also multiple choice questions, image choice. And these are all things that students will view the answers right away to. Um, and uh, so that's it. So there's a, what, there are a limit. Uh, it says here Mentimeter is free with limited content. It's because um, you see that there's question types. You have three possible question types, but six possible quiz questions at the bottom. So right there. So it gives you a little more options, but they cannot all be, uh, you know, the nine questions. They can't be all nine word clouds. Uh, you, get, you can do three word clouds if you want with three different topics. 
So the teacher to create his activity goes to Mentimeter.com and participants to participate, they go to menti.com, they receive a code and then they enter the code and they are able to participate right away. Um, you can use uh, computers, tablets and or mobile devices. Uh, by the way, this is a tool that I also use in workshops, so it's with participants, it's really fun, it's simple, it's quick and uh, yeah, people are engaged right away. So, and then one uh, vocabulary, of course, you can, uh, uh, to build vocabulary, you can also use Padlet as a brainstorm tool. I just thought I would put that in there uh, for you to, to know. And also Quizlet as a review tool, which is, uh, you know, uh, you could use these words that were in the word cloud and then tra transfer them to Quizlet and then students would uh, either practice them at home or either or uh, practice them in class as you wish. But Quizlet is a great review tool. Uh, it's like a little flashcards. Um, so, so what to watch out? Clear expectations. Uh, I do this also to have them talk. So it's I have not done it individually, but you could if you wanted to. Uh, my students always talk when they use the iPad. They do everything in Teams. So uh, as long as the expectations are clear, they can uh, collaborate. Even grade three, simple words, uh, my turn, your turn, uh, you know, yeah, have them start young uh, to, to, to use those tablets and it will become, like I wrote at the bottom, um, when, the, when students are used often, well, tablets don't, are, they're not seen as games or or uh, toys anymore, they're more seen as tools. So they are more part of the classroom uh, management, uh, classroom activities, and the kids don't get as excited, although they still always do get excited when we use iPads. Okay, so I, stru I structure the use of, I of uh, technologies. I use cooperative roles, and um, <laughs> my rule, two hands next on the tablet, that's what I use. Uh, all students must see the screen, and we use uh, we change the person who uses a tablet for each answer. So it's never the same person who uh, answers the question. And um, we, of course, the goal is uh, expectations are to, for them to speak English at all times. Ideally, but it's possible. Um, of something else, prepare. It's on the tablet, it's easier for them to have just a, uh, an app for them to open up and put the pad, uh, the, the, the code. That way it's quicker, but it's also, uh, you can easily find it on Google. So they don't, you don't need to prepare the app uh, uh, for that. Uh, Mentimeter is improving. They are changing things. Uh, well, they're, they're changing uh, the way uh, they organize things. We didn't have a limit before, but we didn't have as many options. So there's a, uh, it always changes, so please uh, view it before you start using it. It may have changed since last time you saw it. Um, and uh, I did talk about Quizlet. So I use, like I said, I use Mentimeter in many circumstances, individually or, or in, I don't use it individually yet, except for workshops, but in teams with students, it really works. Um, and the resources, there's Mentimeter is very uh, easy to use and they have guides to help you start get started. There's also, if you look at the, on the screen, there's a little icon uh, for comments. Well, there's online support and they're very quick to give you online support. So that's, that makes it great to use. Uh, I, like Gabrielle, I also have uh, worked on a video with Sandra and uh, about this, so you can also view it. I put the link there. I know that you may you won't have access to it there, but I put the name of it uh, so you can find it on YouTube, and uh, that may answer more questions that you may have about uh, Mentimeter. So, uh, and of course, you can contact me at those uh, email addresses. One thing, uh, yes, uh, uh, I heard a few people talked about Speak It and the website, the Speak website. Yes, um, they, there will be talk about the, what we will include on the Speak uh, website. And uh, yeah, Sandra and I and Alexandra will be talking.
I don't know if there's any questions for Nadia. No? I... Okay, so I'm going to finish the presentation with uh, the OKC presentation. Thank you, Nadia. Thank you. Okay, good. So I hope it, I, I'm really impressed. I'm always impressed with the different uh, ideas and uh, uh, presentations that uh, uh, you all do. So thank you again. So I wanted to finish with uh, the RECI presentation because I'm sure you've heard about uh, the RECI a lot, but you don't know what it means and you don't know what we do. So I wanted to, uh, for my first presentation, uh, to do that. And maybe later on, uh, later uh, next year, we will uh, do other presentations like this and we will offer uh, other types of presentations. So I hope you really enjoyed this, uh, uh, these uh, uh, presentations. You can access uh, our website. So we have a, a website, domainlangueqcca slash en. We have the part in French. And there is also um, a general website uh, for the RECI, is reci.qc.ca. I will explain uh, very briefly uh, what is the RECI. So we are a network of resource persons that uh, are situated across the province. And we are uh, situated in different school boards uh, in Quebec. So we have uh, two uh, RECI. We have a national and a local. I am a national RECI, so it means that I'm a pedagogical consultant that works uh, especially in ESL. But there are other uh, uh, national that work for uh, other uh, subjects area, subject areas and clientele, like adaptation scolaire or prescolaire. And you have a local RECI that helps you integrate technologies into your class that are situated in your school board, okay? So mainly my mandate is to produce, share, promote uh, useful resources to integrate technologies into your class and um, support other consultants, teachers, and professionals by offering a variety of uh, training sessions. So it could be online like today uh, I do face-to-face -face, uh, uh, day session, it could, depending on, on the need, I could come uh, uh, go to your school board uh, two or three times. We do development groups, uh, workshops, and so on. So um, mainly this is what the RECI is, uh, very quickly, of course. So we have three sections on our, on our website. So you have the professional development uh, uh, section, and there you're going to find a variety of presentations that I did in uh, during training sessions with the teachers and CPs. And you also have access to working session documents. I won't go, I won't explain each of them, but this is, this is going to give you an idea of what you can find on, on this platform. And you have other type uh, of presentation that you can find there. So all the links will be accessible and you will have access to in each presentation, you have a, a type of theoretical framework, but you have also examples of activities that you can do in your classroom with students. In the resource section, you will find uh, different LESs, uh, resources, tools, uh, short activities that you can do with your students. Uh, there is one, uh, the first one that you see on your left is a web tools for ESL teacher. It's a web page where you can find a variety of tools that you can use with your students in your classroom. So for example, if you want to create uh, an online book, you're going to have a suggestions of tools that you can use with your students and you have the resources available to do it, like tutorials. The other one, I created a variety of uh, uh, stations uh, or tasks that you could do with the iPad, but also with Android devices. Is it, if, is, uh, it's what you have in your school board. So you have a variety of tasks uh, to, to be a bit more creative with the tablet with your students. And here are two examples of the latest uh, LESs that uh, was pr uh, produced. With Na one with Nadia, what to use report for the primary level, and one for the secondary level, what happened to the drama teacher. But like I mentioned, uh, these are only uh, some examples of what you can find on the website. In uh, the last section, it's digital environments. Uh, we have, um, we're going to have 
three very soon. So for now it's two. Uh, we have a Balado web. It's a platform where you can um, uh, register and upload uh, uh, podcasts uh, created by your students in class. And uh, uh, they're going to be made accessible for everyone across the province, but mainly it's accessible to everyone. And you have all the resources available for you to create podcasts in your classroom. You have also access to the, um, the productions of other students uh, in French and in English. Okay, so you have a two uh, websites, one platform in French, one in, in English. And you also have access to a Campus Ricci. It's mainly an online training platform that is supported by a Moodle. So there you will find a variety of uh, self-training sessions uh, in French. And for now, there is one for ESL. But we're actually working on uh, producing more uh, that will be available uh, for you next year. Our latest, and we're going to do the launch of this uh, new platform at the beginning of next year. So we're going to do a webinar on that one. So you don't want to miss it. It's our new platform called Professional Learning Digital Network, also available in French called Réseau Pédago Numérique. I won't be talking a lot uh, about it because I want to keep the, the, the excitement until we uh, do a, a public launch of this platform. And uh, so we're very, very excited with the, this new tool that will help you with your professional development. So training in your school board, you are interested in receiving uh, workshops or uh, uh, having um, development groups, uh, having me come into your classroom and film you integrating technologies. <laughs> you can contact your uh, RICI local or your pedagogical consultant. And uh, with them, you identify your needs. You can even uh, consult the workshop offer that we uh, uh, that, that is available on our website. It's going to give you an idea of what we did this year, we offered this year. And if you don't know what is the name of your uh, RICI local, you can go on the RICI.qc.ca website and find the name of your uh, pedagogical consultant. And um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but uh, last Wednesday, uh, the ministry uh, did the launch for the digital uh, plan. So there's going to be a bit more technology available uh, next year for you in the different schools uh, and for the next five years. So there's going to be a lot more technology available. There's going to be a bit more offer of uh, training sessions. So uh, that's why we thought it would be a great idea to start uh, to end the school year with a presentation of uh, these uh, different ideas to integrate ICTs into your class. So don't hesitate to contact us. We are very accessible on Facebook, on Twitter, by email, even call us. Our numbers are not there, but they're available online. And it's going to be a, a pleasure uh, answering and supporting you. So I don't know if there is any question. I really hope that you enjoyed uh, this uh, an hour session. I want to come back to uh, my first presentation. And I want to uh, tell you that uh, next week is going to be our last webinar of our series of four events. And you don't want to miss that one. Uh, two experts will be talking about supporting second language learners who are at risk uh, for reading and language difficulty. I know it's uh, some, we, we wanted to address uh, that uh, uh, topic because we know that is uh, something that is uh, a need in the different uh, schools of Quebec. So um, I'm going to wish you a great uh, end of school year and um, great summer. Have fun. And if you have any comments, you can stay online and chat with us. And uh, thank you for participating.